On this episode, we check out all the features of Kia's sportiest midsize crossover. We then take it into the mountains. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. This is the 2021 Kia Sorento SX in X-Line exclusive Aruba Green Paint. It's an attractive and feature-packed crossover that brings three rows of seats to the midsize category. It also has sporty good looks that should impress all the other parents at the soccer pitch. Our test vehicle included a couple minor options for a total price of $44,290 US dollars including destination. The Sorento is available with a variety of powertrains. The model we have here is a 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder, which produces up to 281 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. This is attached to an eight speed wet dual clutch transmission and it powers all four wheels with a Magna powertrain derived all wheel drive system that relies on a center clutch to send power to the back wheels when needed. EPA rates economy at up to 21 in town and up to 28 MPGs on the highway. When properly equipped, the Sorento can tow up to 3,500 pounds. Now I can't just let this portion go, I have to comment on one thing. The Kia website and advertising says the vehicle includes a quote, lockable center differential, end quote. This is simply incorrect and misleading. A Toyota Land Cruiser has a lockable center differential. A Kia Sorento has a multi-plate clutch. These two things are not the same, but center locking differential sure sounds better, doesn't it? We did reach out to Kia about this discrepancy and they have yet to reply. I just wanna make sure we were clear on that before we move forward. In the back, a power lift gate reveals up to 12.6 cubic feet behind the third row, 45 behind the second, or up to 75.5 with all the rows folded flat. This is very competitive for the class. Under the floor is a storage cubby and tire repair tools. The rear door does include both a lock and close as well as just a close button. Access to the third row is as easy as hitting a button. Slides forward, squish in, and there we go. Yeah. Third row passengers also get USB sockets, cup holders, and general use storage. The second row is a lot better than the third row. We have our own cup holder here. I have a USB socket down there, 12 volt. I even have a captain's chair with patented ratchet motion. It's kind of like theater seating. I get a really good view. I have enough room for my head, uh, tons of room for my legs. I am six foot one, torso legs proportionate, and I fit just fine. This seat is where I would be driving too, so this isn't cheating. There's actually this much space here. This is really nice. And the leather that they're using here, very, uh, very high quality. It is way too hot. I'm gonna turn this on immediately, get that air conditioning going, and I'm also gonna turn on the seat ventilator because yeah, it's got cooled seats in addition to seat warming. Okay, everything on full blast. Can't believe it. it's 80 degrees outside today. For Seattle, that's pretty crazy. Okay, cooling down. Now I can take a look at this interior. Now I drove the hybrid and I rather liked the interior of the hybrid. This is a lot of the same. We have the same basic overall architecture, but we do have different treatments here with wood inlay. Uh, we have the metal here like the other one, more wood, more wood. It's really um, a pretty attractive looking setup. We have the leather wrap steering wheel, leather on the transmission selector. Overall, this is a pretty nice setup, but of course you're paying for that. This is mid forties. If you're spending mid 40s, you do expect something to be a little bit better than average. And this one certainly fits the bill. We have a digital cluster that can be configured with a number of different settings, although it doesn't actually like completely change the design like 
say Audi does. Audi gives you all these different kind of looks. Volkswagen does as well on the new Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. If you get the digital gauge cluster, you can change to about three different layouts. This one, all the layouts are basically the same. Although you can change, uh, you know, the colors and stuff like that. And in fact, when I change my drive modes, it does adjust the colors accordingly. And this does have a lot of drive modes. We're looking at Smart, where it basically figures it out for you. Sport, where it's the most aggressive. Comfort, power's gonna come on smooth. Eco, where it tries to save as much energy as possible. And then Snow, which actually does cut some power so that you can get a start without just spinning your wheels like mad. Notably missing, there is no off-road mode, which for some reason I kind of expected it to have on an X-Line. I don't know why, but it doesn't. We have this huge panorama sunroof. That thing fills up the entire car, and the panel moves too. Let's go put that back, because it's way too hot for more sun today. I think one of the most innovative things in current Kia vehicles is the nav unit. It seems to take leaps ahead with every major revision, and this is another one. But it's not perfect. The main screen is very subtle. I think perhaps a little too subtle. There's just not a lot of information there. I go over to the individual menu selections, and I get just a ton of icons that I have to decipher. Now, if this was say, a mobile device, this would be fine. I would have time to look and decide and, you know, enjoy the little graphics. But when you're driving, you don't want your eyeballs to have to decipher, is that supposed to be a car? Is that supposed to be a phone? No, you want your eyes to go straight to it. It's actually one thing I really like about the most recent Honda system is they use a color coding scheme so that visually it really breaks down the menu system. This one is the exact opposite of that everything looks exactly the same. And you flip the screen and there's just more of it. And if you go into setup, you get even more of it. Luckily, all the features of the setup actually work really well. Of course, we have sounds of nature. They've been putting that into all of these. Nobody needs that. I can talk to the passengers in the back with a simple push of a button. Let's look at navigation. Let's see if it can find a Cafe Ladro for us. So let's just do a search for places. Coffee shops. Please say the line number. Oh, that just went to the line numbers. I don't want that. Let's do a, a let's do a free search. Please say a command. Find the nearest Cafe Ladro. Please say a category name. Uh, coffee shops. Please say the line number. I can tell you Flying Saucer Pizza is not a coffee shop. Freestyle searches used to work so well. Why does this not work anymore? Okay, let's look at radio. Uh, we have Sirius XM Satellite as an option and you get the funky um, hipster inspired tube digital display. Uh, it looks, looks like it's straight off of Winamp from 1990. Let's hook up our iPhone. Okay, and then we have Apple CarPlay. Uh, right now, it is not filling the whole screen. However, if I go to the Kia screen, device connections, Apple CarPlay, cannot change setting to CarPlay when CarPlay is enabled. Okay, we'll unplug that. Now let's go CarPlay. I do not want split screen. I want full screen. So now I've deselected that. I then plug it back in. And what do we get? CarPlay is full screen. And then once in CarPlay, of course, here we can do a freestyle search. Super easy. Find the nearest Cafe Ladro. The closest one I found is Cafe Ladro on Urban Plaza in Kirkland. In the end, Siri wins. For some reason, the built-in maps here, I can't get it to do a just freestyle search. So I would just use CarPlay all the time, honestly, in the system. Plus, it's easier to see at a glance when you're driving down the road. Aircon is a nice setup because you get physical buttons here as well as dual zone, which I like. There is an auto mode if you want to, if you're into that, that's fine. I got multiple cup holders and a nice little bin here to put things. I can put my phone down here to charge on the charging pad, but unless it's plugged in, um, you're only going to get Bluetooth audio, not wireless CarPlay. 
Overall, visibility is quite good. Seating position is nice. I like the steering wheel. It's got lots of features. You've got paddle shifters if you're into that in a uh, vehicle with an automatic transmission. Yeah. Oh, and let's talk about safety. This has a whole lot of different stuff going on. We got the blind spot monitoring. We have lane detection, adaptive cruise control with lane centering, collision mitigation, and when we put it in reverse, we get a surround view camera and a rear view with tracking lines. Now that we covered all that, we have a test. Let's go take this to our off-road course and see what it can do. Okay, let's see how 281 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque feel jumping onto the freeway. And, oh, there we go. Perky. That's not bad at all. Now, here we are on the freeway. Good opportunity to test out the fun adaptive cruise control feature. This is, of course, a way of maintaining distance to vehicles in front of you without having to pay much attention. Now, it is a safety system. It is not autopilot. Of course, this comes with all of the safety stuff you would expect in 2021. We have collision mitigation that also detects cyclists and pedestrians, among other things. We have blind spot warning with the fancy lane change cameras down there. I'm probably confusing the people behind me. And then on top of that, we have adaptive cruise control with lane centering. Now, I have this on already, and if I take my hand off the wheel, we will continue to go around the corner and stay planted in the middle of the lane. That is what you want in a system like this. Some other vehicles only have lane detection, the difference being that it'll bump off the lanes or notify you if you're crossing a lane, but it will not actively steer the vehicle down the middle of the lane. This one does, and it does a phenomenal job. On the freeway, it's very quiet. It's comfortable. I like these seats. I, of course, have both heating and cooling. Uh, the leather on the wheel feels really good. This is a nice driving experience. Even the suspension, though it's a little bit on the stiff side, uh, does a decent job of soaking up kind of the ruts and the, you know, the holes in the freeway. Uh, now, this isn't like New Jersey. This, these, our roads are actually pretty decent out here. There are a number of different driving modes here. Uh, we're currently in smart, which basically detects what we're doing based on how aggressive we are or how relaxed we are. Um, but let's go ahead and put it into sport mode and see how that changes things up. This, of course, does have an eight-speed dual-clutch transmission, and that should give me a pretty engaging feel uh, with the drivetrain. Okay, let's go around the corner, throttle it in. Yeah, it's a little slow to kick in. You know, in general, I like the Kia setups. I think they do a decent job. Um, I do feel like some of the European brands just do suspension better, but this is just fine. It's nothing I would complain about if I owned one of these. It does not have adjustable suspension, so what you have right now is what you get. Um, I am feeling a lot of the divots in the road through the wheel and through the seat, which isn't exactly what you want. Let's use the paddle. So we're in second gear, throttle. That shifts as soon as we hit red line, even in sport mode. But it sounds pretty good. It drives pretty good. Yeah, this is a fun, sporty car. I like it on pavement. Let's try a zero to 60 and see how this thing comes together. I'm gonna to put the drive mode into sport. There we are, gauges get all fancy. And I'm gonna floor it in three, two, one, go. What, why did that take so long to get going? That's in sport? Yeah, that's in sport. 9.36 seconds. What the heck is going on? This thing should be way faster than that. I don't think it liked that I was pre-staging with a brake. Let's just do nothing and just go wide open throttle from, from dead stop. Road's a little moist, but we're not having any grip issues today. Three, two, one, go. 
Okay, there we go. That's a surge of the engine. That's much better. And 60. 6.86 seconds. That's where we want to be. It's quick. It's fun to drive on pavement. Let's see how it does in the woods. Now that we're on a forest road in the woods, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this from sport to smart mode and we'll see what it can figure out. There is no off-road mode though, which is a little bit of a disappointment. So we'll see how this thing does. The road is pretty rutted. Suspension actually seems okay. I was concerned it was gonna be a little on the stiff side, but it's not too bad. It is interesting to note that because this is based on the SX trim, it has an extra one inch of ground clearance. So you're looking at a total of 8.3 inches. So this of course has the eight speed dual clutch transmission and it is now a wet clutch. So that should remove um, concerns about overheating. Still could overheat. We're gonna keep an eye out for that today and definitely will mention it if it becomes an issue. Like right now I'm climbing, my foot is on wide open throttle and it's just slowly increasing speed. I'm in drive, I'm in smart mode, and it's acting like an idiot. I don't get that at all. Steering wheel feels a bit on the numb side. I'm not really feeling what's going on. Whereas on asphalt, it felt fine. It was nicely weighted. Here, it's just kind of like, I don't know what it's doing. And then the turbo surges on. Yeah, overall, this is just kind of a, a weird balance. It's like, it's not giving me throttle sometimes. It's giving me all the throttle other times. I'm having a real hard time just keeping progressive with anything in this vehicle. It's just, it doesn't wanna just smoothly do something. It's like, you want all the power, you want none of the power. I mean, like, what are you doing, car? Is that because it's in smart mode? I don't know, let's switch to comfort and see if that improves predictability in terms of how this vehicle responds. Because predictability is really important. If you want power, you should be able to get power. Throttle and it's just not doing anything. It's so weird. I haven't experienced that in any other Kia. This is very unique to this vehicle. At least I haven't noticed it in the other vehicles. I'm gonna keep an eye out for that now. It's almost like the electronic throttle when I go wide open is just saying, oh, you want 1%? Okay, we'll give you 1%, but no more. Well, let's see how it does. We're about to enter the rock trail and this will be really interesting to see if this unpredictability rears its head. Uh, I am gonna keep it in comfort from now on so that uh, it removes the question of whether it's the smart mode that's messing it up or if it's something else in the system. If since we're in comfort here and it's not gonna change its drive modes, this should really help us figure that out. And the first challenge is a pretty easy one. This is a set of sharp rocks on the left and a little gravelly stuff on the right. It will remove traction a little bit, but it's nothing too intense. It's just kind of a warm up. So right now I am in comfort mode. I am not locking the center clutch. I am just rolling forward. We'll see what this does. I do like that surround camera. That's pretty cool. A little slippery. Did rain recently, so the rocks are a little moist today. Okay. Yeah, I did just fine. Now I have to be careful of these wheels. They are good looking for one, but they're also 20 inches, which means I don't have a whole lot of sidewall. Sidewall is the amount of room between the wheel and the ground. It's that side of the tire. And you have to be really careful not to pinch it against the wheel or you can get a flat. It's really difficult to repair flat too. Okay, let's see how this does on the rock climb. Now there's not a lot to do to set this up. I'm just gonna keep it in drive. 
And I'm not gonna use smart mode because of the way the transmission was acting lower on the hill. Uh, I'm going to keep it in comfort so we can see how well this eight-speed dual clutch works. Now we have 8.3 inches of ground clearance. We don't have any underbody protection. We do have modified front and rear uh, bumpers, which should help with our clearance. And uh, of course, we also have a Magna powertrain based all wheel drive system, which uses a center clutch. Now I can enable center lock, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, because that is the optimal off-road configuration. Uh, yeah, with that, let's head on up. So if you haven't watched this channel before, we go up this rock climb. It's actually just a standard rock trail here in the Pacific Northwest. People use these for access roads uh, to hiking destinations, trailheads, stuff like that. So this is not an unusual thing to do with a vehicle like this where I live. And as a benefit, because we are taking traction off individual tires while going uphill, we can kind of get an idea at how well this all-wheel drive system responds to tricky situations. Let's say you're going uphill and you hit ice on a couple tires. How well does the all-wheel drive system respond? That's what we're gonna see. So I'm slowly increasing throttle and we should see the wheels braking and maybe shifting power around. Oh, it almost got me over. Come on, I'm just keeping the throttle in and the computers are doing all the work. Boom, there we go. It got through it and it did not overheat yet. <laughs> Dual clutches, they're known to overheat. Hopefully this wet clutch is an improvement over the old one. Let's take another look how the 2021 Kia Sorento X-Line all-wheel drive puts power down. Here is the same difficult section of the course, but here we've slowed it down. You can see where the brakes are grabbing the spinning wheel, which then redistributes that power back into the system. So far, throttle's been rather predictable. The car's doing what I asked. None of that weirdness from down below. Now I'm just crawling along at about one, two, three, four miles per hour. Ooh, hmm, hit a problem there. These are, of course, all season radials. Now you might be asking, why don't we throw on all terrains for something like this? It's because we're not allowed to change the tires on manufacturer test cars. We have to use them as they provide them. Same thing with airing down the tires. They prefer that we keep everything to OEM specification. A little more oomph here. Come on, come on. Okay, you got through that. Didn't expect that to be a problem, but on roads like this, you never really know what you're gonna get. And the next challenge, this will also take some traction off the wheels, but not quite so much as down below. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't a problem at all. So the X-Line, I would rank this as a street-going three-row crossover that is very good around town. Trails, I don't find this particularly enjoyable. It doesn't feel like the vehicle enjoys this kind of an outing. Now I've taken other vehicles up here that are in the same class and they've done just fine. The Volkswagen Atlas and the Atlas Sport Cross, they did great up here. Subaru Ascent, very good up here. This one, it just doesn't feel like this is home. Now there is one more trick this thing can do. There's a button here for downhill brake control. This will break all four wheels independently to help keep me straight and controlled on the descent. And it is doing that at about three miles per hour, which ooh, two miles per hour. This is actually oh, still now all of a sudden when things got tough, it decided to go up to five miles per hour. See, that is exactly the problem I have with this thing. It is not predictable going down a hill like this. And then all of a sudden the vehicle decides it wants to do five miles per hour instead of the two it was doing previously. That's not OK. That can cause major issues and major damage on the vehicle if it happens at the wrong time. So the vehicle is good. The capability is kind of there. The vehicle is just not set up to be able to pull this stuff off successfully in a way that I'm confident about. That's my look at the Kia Sorento X-Line all-wheel drive. It's a good looking vehicle. It's got a lot of great features on paper. It is amazing. However, I think in the real world, yeah, I think there's better options. I would personally not buy this one, but that's not the final word. We have another adventure with this vehicle. Carlina joins me and we take it on the Washington Overlanding Trail. Does it do better in that kind of a road situation? You will have to watch that episode to find out. 
So be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, hey, if you're watching it after next week, you can click right now and watch it. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again right here every week. Oof. Oh, not, not fun, not fun. <laughs>